Hi guys. So we're going to talk about Gypsy Rose today. This is going to be a good video to listen only. I'm only going to show a couple of photos. Um, but I really want to talk about Ken. A few weeks ago, I made a video acknowledging that Gypsy was following her ex-fiance, Ken. And this is when things were really like post and delete and kind of weird with her. And I, like a lot of other people, recognized that and found it interesting. I, in fact, I think that I described it verbatim as an interesting choice. Because for me, if I'm in a marriage, um, I, I'm not going to be friends with my ex who I was engaged to be married to. And that's just the way that I operate. Everyone looks at it a little differently. Some people can be friends with exes. Some people can be friends on social media, but you don't talk on the phone. Like, whatever. I think it's a little weird. And I thought it was interesting. Well... There is a newly released photo of Gypsy Rose at a tattoo shop with her ex-fiance, Ken. I'll throw the image right here. They, it looks like he was getting a tattoo done and she was sitting next to him. The photo is absolutely going viral. It's on so many different TikToks, Instagrams. What this photo is doing is making a lot of people um, kind of think, hmm, well, maybe it wasn't all that weird that she was following him um, on social and now she announces a separation and she's seen out in public with her ex-fiance. She knows that she's going to be photographed. She knows that people know who she is and she chose to go to a very public, wide open tattoo shop with him and maybe she wants you know, there's no such thing as bad press. A lot of people operate off that philosophy. Maybe she's looking at it that way. Maybe she just doesn't care. I'm, I'm not sure. But I went over and looked at Ryan's Instagram because his Instagram is still up and it's public, at least as of, you know, a few hours ago when I checked. And his last picture that he posted was of their little puppy Pixie on March 21st. A lot of the comments are obviously just dragging him to hell and back and pretty much roasting the guy. What I want to know, number one, is where is the puppy? Where is Pixie? Did Ryan keep the dog? Is he... Um, is he happy to keep the dog? Is he going to make sure the dog is taken care of? Was the dog rehomed? If it was rehomed, was it done responsibly? How sad for this little puppy. That sucks. Like, it, like you're, you're literally brought home. You start to get to know these two people for what, five, six weeks. And then everything changes. It just sucks. People, in my opinion, the reason that I get so kind of upset over these kinds of things is because I feel like so many people don't think of the sometimes 10, 12, 15, 16 year commitment that owning a dog really is. Um, you know, it's not something that you do because you just got out of prison and you want to have a puppy to show on social media. It, it's so much deeper than that. And, um, it, it will always upset me when people treat getting a dog as if it's just something to do on a nice Saturday afternoon. The other thing is that Ryan is only following eight people and he is no longer following anyone associated with Gypsy. So he's, you know, cleaned it up. He still has photos of him and Gypsy on his page and I'm sure that those will be the next things to be removed. But um, he's making a very well known through his follows, through his... Um, Instagram bio, like he's got 371,000 followers because he was married to Gypsy Rose. And now, you know, what's he going to do? Is he going to try to become a reality star? Like, is he going to try to use this newfound fame 
for financial profit because I do think the guy is weird and he always struck me as very odd. Um, I could see him trying to become like a D-list celebrity by um, being Gypsy Rose's infamous ex-husband, but I would like to hear what he had to say um, about living with her and being in the room when I'm pretty sure a lot of interesting conversations were happening. Whether or not we'll ever hear it, I don't know. If he speaks publicly, of course, I will bring it to y'all. But um, I'm sure that he heard a whole lot. Now, I have two parts or two articles that I want to read some to y'all because it really breaks down who Ken is. This first one is from People Magazine. And it says, before Gypsy Rose Blanchard got married to her current husband, Ryan Scott Anderson, she was previously engaged to another man. While serving time in prison for her role in the killing of her mother, Dee Dee Blanchard, Gypsy was in a relationship with a man named Ken, who first started as a pen pal. Though Ken has largely stayed out of the spotlight, Gypsy has revealed a few details about him and their relationship over the years. In her new Lifetime docuseries, The Prison Convention Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, Gypsy gets incredibly candid about her former romance with Ken, noting how he was one of her first major heartbreaks. When Gypsy spoke to E! News in 2019, she said that Ken first contacted her after watching the HBO documentary Mommy, Dad, and Dearest, which detailed Gypsy's early life and the abuse she endured from her mother, Dee Dee. And I've mentioned before, I have not watched the act because it's more fictional, but I did watch that documentary and um, HBO is how I learned about Gypsy. It continues and says, after he wrote her a letter of support, Gypsy said they started corresponding back and forth on a weekly basis. We became fast friends, she told the publication. It was pretty soon after that we started talking on the phone. We would spend hours on the phone. I talked to him like I had known him my whole life and vice versa. Gypsy told E! News that it wasn't too long after they started talking that she sent him a visitation form to see her in prison. He came and it was kind of a funny story, but within the first 30 minutes, he leaned over and gave me the most wonderful kiss of my whole life. The kiss he gave me was quite passionate. I looked at him and was like, I didn't even know you liked me like that. And he said, yeah, I have for a while. And I'm like, I have for a while too, Gypsy added. Noting she was the first girl he ever said I love you to. Who knows if that's even true. That, that could be completely fabricated. Though the news of their engagement didn't come out until 2019, Gypsy told E! News that Ken proposed the previous October. This was something we had discussed for a while, so it wasn't out of the blue, she told the publication about their engagement. We bounced around the idea, we have a pretty solid thing going, and we're pretty sure this is what we want. So, on the October visit, he held my hands closed and told me how much I meant to him, and he's like, I would really, really be honored if I could have your hand in marriage, and I said yes. Gypsy revealed that her first engagement ring from Ken was a silver band. However, when it got confiscated in prison, he bought her a new one. We are going back and forth as if we are going to have a, a wedding ceremony in here, she said, about having their nuptials in or out of prison at the time. So if we decide to have a small ceremony inside, we're going to have both. So it's not like I'm getting cheated out of wearing a dress or my father getting to walk me down the aisle. I have that on the outside when I come home. They were very off and on, and I'll get into that here in a second, but I think this hot and cold way that she handles things is a pattern. And it's very clear that she hasn't gained that ability to not be so impulsive. And I think we saw that on her social media as well. It's, it continues and says, though Gypsy was Dee Dee's only child, she told E! News that Ken came from a very large family. He's one of five. He has a big family and so do I. My father's side is pretty big. It's something I've, it's something I'm relieved about because it's like a lot of people in here, they don't always have that kind of family support. She added that Ken's family had been super supported, uh, supportive of their relationship. I was very concerned when we first started dating because I was like, oh my God, your family is going to think of me like I'm in prison for murder. Um, side note, girl, that's because you orchestrated it. Of course they're going to think that way. 
She continued and said that he responded, no, my mom has watched the documentary and my grandma has watched the documentary. Everybody has watched it so they know your story and they do have a heart for you. So I didn't have to explain everything. It was sort of already known when I came into the picture. In August 2019, the pair briefly called off their engagement before reuniting. However, their reunion was short-lived. As in August of 2022, the Springfield News Leader reported that Gypsy had married a man named Ryan Scott Anderson of St. Charles, Louisiana that June. According to an East source close to the family, the two were planning to get married in January while Gypsy was still in prison, but they have now canceled those plans. They're referring to Ken here. Both Gypsy and Ken are heartbroken over the situation and still have nothing but love for each other. They each intend on taking some time apart to focus on themselves as individuals. Doesn't that whole notion of taking time to get my, get to know myself, that's exactly what she was saying about Ryan. Um... In her new Lifetime docuseries, Gypsy gets incredibly candid about her relationship with Ken. Every time I get close to someone, they leave me. Adding that she was still very young when she got close to Ken and had a lot to learn about relationships. He left me and it broke my heart, she said at the end of their engagement. Seems like she still has a lot more learning to do, so I'm not even sure why the marriage to Ryan. Um, a lot of people have speculated that she married Ryan to manipulate the poor parole board. Tell me how y'all feel about that theory down below. In the Lifetime docuseries, it's revealed that Gypsy and her now husband Ryan had a major fight ahead of their nuptials as Gypsy opened up about her lingering feelings for Ken. During a phone conversation between the pair, Gypsy even reveals that she had a dream that she left Ryan for Ken. Wild. It eventually comes out that Gypsy was somewhat recently in contact with Ken, even though she previously told Ryan that they hadn't been in contact for months. The news caused a major strife in their relationship at the time. I also have this snippet from an article on the list, and it goes over more of like the end of their engagement. It says that Gypsy Rose, Blanchard, and Ken ended their relationship for a second and final time in 2021. In Gypsy's new ebook, she disclosed that the public scrutiny from the act, a 2019 show based on her life, strained their relationship. Ken was a private person and didn't want the attention or scrutiny. While I understood and shared in his sentiment, I took it hard when he ended our relationship, she wrote. She felt isolated as she dealt with her first heartbreak and wished her mom, Dee Dee, was around so that she could pour her heart out to her. In the docu-series, she also admitted that their breakup made her sadly realize that it was rare for her to form deep connections with people and have them stick around. I also think that's interesting because um, Dr. John from Hidden True, True Crime talked about how hard it, how hard he thinks it will be for Gypsy to maintain any kind of relationships, especially romantic ones. So it's just very interesting. And, you know, maybe Dee Dee would have been around. You want to talk to your mom? Maybe she would have been around. But that's stuff I've ranted about before. So it's just, a, you know, um, very complex. Like, Gypsy has issues being honest and truthful. She has issues being consistent. I, I, I truly feel like her best approach to all of this would have just been stay off social media and focus on rebuilding your life. And for the love of God, I would have been knee deep in therapy if I went through everything that she went through at the hands of her mother. But there's been some interesting choices and seeing that she's a public figure and has done a whole bunch of weird stuff. I'm happy to cover it, but I wanted to share a little more about Ken because since that photo is now totally going viral, figure that it would be interesting um, to make this video. So I think that's going to be enough for today. If you like the video, please leave a like in the comments. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.